Hi everyone, I'm Gary Bronze, and on behalf of the National Kidney Foundation, I'd like to welcome you to this edition of Facebook Live. You know, over the past few years, we presented Facebook Live broadcasts on a variety of subjects that have to do with kidneys. We talked about the connection between diabetes, heart disease, and kidney disease. We talked about hepatitis C. Uh, we discussed gout. We spoke about high potassium and how important it is to control it. And today we're going to be discussing what I think is a really difficult subject, kidney cancer, and specifically an option for treating kidney cancer called immunotherapy. Immunotherapy is a type of cancer treatment that uses the body's own immune system to fight diseases. And if that sounds complex, well, it kind of is. It can be a really tough treatment option to understand. And it's for that reason that we're really lucky today to be joined by Dr. Anna Molina. Dr. Molina is a kidney cancer specialist and an expert in the area of immunotherapy, specifically for treating kidney cancer. And she's going to try to help us make sense of this really complicated subject. Also joining us today is Jack Vitale, otherwise known as Conga Jack. Jack's a chief engineer by trade, a pretty accomplished musician. Jack also has, is a cancer survivor, and he has an inspirational story. So as we go along here, we're going to get into some risk factors for kidney cancer, how it's diagnosed, some of the treatment options available, specifically immunotherapy, and the importance of support. But let's start off by trying to define this type of cancer. So for that, I'll turn to you, Dr. Molina, and thanks again for being with us. So why don't you set the stage for us? What is kidney cancer? Explain it. Thanks, Gary, for having me here today. Sure. So when we think about kidney cancer, we're referring to the two organs are in the back on our flanks here. And when we talk about kidney cancer, you're referring to cancer of the cells of the actual kidney. Uh, the most common type of kidney cancer is what's called renal cell carcinoma. So you'll hear the terms kidney cancer, renal cell carcinoma, okay. RCC being used to describe kidney cancer. And in the U.S., it's estimated that about 63,000 uh, people will be diagnosed with kidney cancer a year. Okay. And who's at risk? So various risk factors. One that uh, comes to mind right away is age. So this is a cancer that affects uh, people in their mid-60s. It's also a male predominant cancer, so we do see more men than female being diagnosed with kidney cancer. Mm -hmm. And then there are other uh, uh, risk factors such as smoking history, patients who have a history of hypertension or high blood pressure, uh, being obese or overweight. These are all very common uh, risk factors. We also think about family history. So uh, if you have a brother or sister who has kidney cancer, for example, you are at increased risk of developing kidney cancer. Okay. Uh, we think about exposures, so certain metals uh, that patients are exposed to in their line of work, for example, welders. Really? Um, also uh, hereditary. So there are hereditary <coughs> or genetic uh, factors that put you at risk for developing kidney cancer. These are quite rare. Only about 5% of, of patients that have kidney cancer have a hereditary uh, risk factor, okay. such as um, von, uh, Lipo, von Hippel-Lindau syndrome or Berthog-DeBay syndrome. These are all uh, risk factors that can put you at increased risk of developing this type of cancer. Got it. And are, are there specific signs or symptoms that somebody would notice? Is there pain? Is there tiredness? Is there something that that would lead somebody to go and get checked out? That's a very good question. So interestingly, the majority of these tumors, over 70% of kidney uh, tumors, are diagnosed incidentally or by accident. Uh, most patients are going in for something else, and they get some type of imaging scan that we'll talk about, um, and uh, uh, kidney mass is identified. There are signs and symptoms for you to watch out for, such as blood in the urine, whether it's what we call gross hematuria, you see the blood, or microscopic, you get a urine test in the clinic and mm -hmm. your doctor tells you there's blood in your urine. Uh, also, uh, flank pain, some patients can develop flank, flank pain, some patients may palpate a mass in their flank, for example. Uh, also, symptoms related to cancer that has spread, for example, if you have uh, bony aches and pains that are new, ba new back pain, headaches, uh, these are all symptoms that, that uh, patients can develop. And then in the clinic, things that, that can help us diagnose kidney cancer are blood tests. So for example, if you get a, a blood count and your doctor sees that you have anemia, this may be a sign of kidney cancer. Um, or that uh, your calcium level is very elevated or liver function tests are abnormal. These are all signs right. that you may have uh, an underlying kidney cancer. Okay. And in terms of diagnosing it, uh, 
CT scans, MRIs. I've, I've heard of you know different types of ways of diagnosing this. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. So the the first uh, the first thing that we do when we're trying to diagnose a kidney cancer or suspect a kidney cancer is imaging. And imaging are, are studies that you perform to look inside the body. So you can have an ultrasound. An ultrasound, uh, you don't get radiation. It uses uh, sound waves to find uh, tumors in various organs. You can have uh, CT scans. So these are very uh, uh, intricate scans where you, you get uh, uh, multiple x-rays. And then you can see virtual slices of organs of interest, for example. And then MRIs, or magnetic resonance imaging, uh, uses magnetic uh, um, magnetic rays to identify tumors. These are all ways or imaging modalities that, that are used, but also, as I mentioned, some of the blood tests, so getting a urine test, getting um, uh, blood counts, uh, okay. and, and also, um, finally, uh, by obtaining tissue. So you can, if you identify something that looks suspicious on a scan, you may want to get a biopsy and confirm that you do, in fact, have a kidney cancer. Got it. Got it. And I hear people talk all the time about stages of cancer, mm -hmm. right? Uh, Jack, you know, had stage four cancer, I, I think. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? How, how did the staging yeah. work? So I think the important thing to know about staging, uh, staging is referring to where is the cancer located. So staging has various components. You're talking about uh, what is the size of the cancer? Uh, is the cancer near other organs? Is it growing into other organs uh, surrounding the, the, the organ of, of interest? Uh, are lymph nodes or lymph glands uh, in, in the area or region involved? Uh, has the cancer gone to other parts of the body, for example, lungs, um, bone, and so forth? So we, we uh, commonly grade or, or stage cancers from a, a one to four uh -huh. uh, a numerical value, one being <clears throat> a tumor that's localized to the kidney. So this, these are usually stage ones. You're talking about a seven centimeter, less than seven centimeter size tumor that's confined to the kidney Two, it's bigger than seven centimeters, but still confined to the kidney. Three, it's going uh, outside of the kidney, so now. Which um, means me mes metastasized, is that? Not the word? yet. So okay. three, it's starting to, so it's already growing outside of the kidney capsule that protects the kidney. Uh -huh. It may be going into the blood vessels that feed the kidney, but has not left the, ki the, the area. So Got stage it. four means that it's left the area. So it's growing uh, either left through the circulation or extend it from the kidney to the surrounding organs. That's metastasized. That's metastasis. Okay. Correct. And is, that, is that what you had, Jack? Yes. Is okay. Yes. Okay. Um, treatment options. So now if somebody learns that they have kidney cancer, do they get surgery? Do they have immunotherapy? Do they take medicine? What, what are some treatment options that you would... Uh, that you, yeah, so that's a, a, a great question. So staging is very important to for you to try to determine what treatment you're going to offer a patient. So having that CAT scan of the abdomen, for example, looking at the kidneys is not the only thing you do. You need to look at the entire body. So you are getting uh, what we call an extent of disease workup, imaging of the chest, potentially imaging of the brain, imaging of the bones to get an idea of how extensive is the cancer because in that, uh, that you tailor your care okay. towards that stage. Mm -hmm. So uh, in patients who have stage one, two, and three kidney cancer, surgery is a standard of care. So you're going to offer those patients surgery. And then with surgery, there are different modalities that are used. Uh, you'll hear the term partial nephrectomy. So for a stage one early stage, you're going to do what's called a partial nephrectomy, where you don't take out the entire kidney, just the tumor, okay. and you spare the patient's kidney and kidney function, which is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, for larger tumors, you will do what's called a, um, you'll have a, what's called a radical nephrectomy, where they take out the entire kidney, uh, depending on the location, they may take out uh, a gland, a little gland that sits on top of the kidney called the adrenal gland, mm -hmm. and then they remove the surrounding lymph nodes. Uh, so those are the two uh, surgical modalities. Now, not everyone can undergo surgery. So for uh, patients who are very ill, for example, or elderly, or have other medical issues uh, where it would be high risk to perform a surgery, depending on the size, you can do uh, ablation. So okay. ablation is you're destroying the tumor by another modality. So you introduce um, a needle into the tumor through the skin, mm -hmm. and then uh, the doctor will either introduce what's called an ice uh, ball or cryoablation or, or, um, or heat ablation. 
Um, so these are different modalities that you can use to destroy tumors. These usually reserved for smaller tumors. Okay. Uh, in patients where there is a very small tumor or they're very ill from, from um, other medical issues, right. you may do active surveillance where you're monitoring them closely. Um, and if the tumor grows, then you, you will reconsider doing treatment. And then active surveillance, I'm sorry, active surveillance is good maybe for, for elderly people or people that might be more at risk doing a surgery or some other type of treatment they would just by kind of leaving it, right? Correct, correct. So a small tumor that's really not growing, uh, that's staying stable, you may uh, just monitor that patient. And sometimes, depending on what the underlying cancer is, the underlying kidney cancer is, you can sometimes monitor these these patients for years without having to intervene right. ever. Okay. Um, so we do reserve that for certain patients, and and you should talk to your surgeons about that as right. an option. Right. Um, um, and then ultimately, is immunotherapy, which is part of what we want yeah. to talk about today, right? Yeah. So in terms of of immunotherapy, when I think about treating patients with kidney cancer in general, you're talking about treating patients who have stage four mm -hmm. or advanced kidney cancer that is unresectable where they can't undergo a surgery. And um, immunotherapy is newer uh, treatment. Let me just backtrack a little bit and talk about um, the, the targeted therapy. So the, the standard of care for the past you know, over a decade now has been using these drugs called targeted therapies. And what targeted therapies do is they target the actual cancer cells. So you are um, targeting something that's making that cancer cell grow. Uh, these drugs, which in general are oral medications or some are through the vein called intravenous medications, uh, go into the body and they go to the tumor cell and cause uh, cell death. Okay. So that's targeted. Immunotherapy is different. You're not affecting that tumor cell directly. You're actually uh, affecting the immune system. So you are promoting the immune system or activating or turning on the immune system to recognize cancer and attack cancer cells. And the way to think of it, or the way I think of it is, um, uh, cancer cells are abnormal cells in your body. Um, typically, the immune system is responsible for identifying abnormal cells, whether it's an infectious uh, bacteria or virus or whatever it may be, and also cancer. And what um, the immune system will do, these, these immune cells, they become activated or turn on, and they go and they attack these abnormal cells. Right. What happens with cancer is cancer is able to evade or hide from the immune system. Okay. So by hiding, they're not detected, they're not destroyed. So there are medications that we are now giving this, these immunotherapy drugs or what we call checkpoint inhibitors, um, where we are now able to, in essence, turn the brakes off of the immune system. The immune system now recognizes the cancer cells and mounts an attack. Got it. So it's really you're activating the immune system to attack the cancer, not attacking the cancer itself. And when somebody's on immunotherapy, what can they expect? What, what happens? So I think the, the biggest uh, uh, difference between immunotherapy and, and what we have been using for the past decade, the targeted therapies, is that uh, immunotherapies are given intravenously. They're all IV, so they go directly into the vein. Um, they're not given like pills on a daily basis. They're okay. typically given in different mm -hmm. intervals. So anywhere from every two weeks, every three weeks, or once a month, depending on uh, the drug that is being given. Um, the other major difference is compared to other drugs that we used to give for kidney cancer or still give for kidney cancer, they're much better tolerated. So the toxicity or side effects are much less. They do, you know, patients do experience fatigue. There may be nausea. There may be diarrhea, yeah. uh, different symptoms, but overall um, much better tolerated. Got it. Um, we were talking a little bit earlier, you and I, and we were talking about support. Mm -hmm. and support can come from your family, it can come from your friends, a spouse, uh, support groups. I know you run a support group. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that for the audience and kind of let them know yeah. the importance of it? So I think definitely the, the support and having support, whether it's from your physicians, the social workers, the psychologists, uh, your family members, um, your community religious leaders, it's a, a very important part of your cancer care. Mm -hmm. um, I truly believe that without the support, it's very hard for patients to get through a, a diagnosis of a advanced kidney cancer coming for treatments. So having, having support is, is extremely, extremely important. I started a support group about two years ago 
where we meet uh, every two months and we have different speakers. You know, we'll have a social worker that comes and teaches the patients how to do meditation. We've had psychologists, various experts learning about genetics of cancer, uh, treatments, and I, I feel it's been very, it's been, I, I hear great things from the patients and family members yeah. that it's really helped them, uh, one, realize that they're not alone in this and that there, there are a lot of services and, and a lot of education that you can gain from gotcha. support groups. Right, and that's where you met Jack, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so Jack, here we are. Uh, kidney cancer patient. Yeah, uh, you had your kidney removed. Right? Yes, I did. I had it removed. Um, you, 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 you did you experience? You went through immunotherapy as well. I went through immunotherapy first. So what, that was did, my why first. Why don't you therapy. describe your story for for? Well, I, I in 2014, I like she like Dr. Winner says, you don't always experience pain or anything like that. I had no pain. I just noticed through urination that my one day my my urine was like rust color. Went to the hospital that night because it did have a little pain after mm -hmm. that. Thought it was a kidney stone. It told me it was cancer. I went. I, I didn't see Dr. Molina first. I went to another doctor who put me on IL-2 immunotherapy. And I went through that. And um, it was kind of successful. For nine months, I was stable. And then that, then I started to get active again. And then I, uh, through uh, that support group that she was talking about, my wife had heard about that. And uh, we went, and um, we met Dr. Molina that day, and um, through a conversation, I decided that you know she was going to be my doctor from here on in. And um, through that, she put me on a trial, right, for Keytruda, which is also immunotherapy. Okay. And that was successful for a little while. I tried that. And then when that stopped working, um, we went on to this targeted therapy, which is Votriate, which explains the hair color, by the way. Your hair wasn't always this color. It wasn't always this color. It used yeah. to be black. And I used to have hair. So and you used to have <laughs> hair. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, and uh, I've been successful on that for about a year now. Okay. And, you know, she mentioned the support, the support group. She said how she gets such valuable information, you know, by listening to us. Uh, uh, we get valuable information from the doctors, but they also get it from us because in that same, the same time that we spend there, we tell them how we're feeling and what we're going through, and I imagine they get a lot through that, am I right? Absolutely. You know, it's, it's definitely something that works for both sides of the table, and it's, it's fantastic. You know, I try to make them as often as I can, and um, I made a lot of friends through that. Right. You know, I, I always say friends I wish I never met. Yeah. And they understand what I mean because I met them through cancer, but I'm so blessed to have them. Good you for know. you. They're like family to me. And right? how are you doing now, physically, emotionally? You physically, look great. I'm doing great. Um... I lost 46 pounds, you know, I lost 46 pounds through this, but that's okay, and um, I live like you guys do. I mean, um, I, I do everything you do. I, I'm a chief engineer of a, of a huge office building. There's a lot of work to be done there, and um, I'm a musician on the weekends. I play almost every weekend, and in fact, I'm playing as soon as I leave you guys ton here tonight. So um, I do that. That takes a lot out of you. Nothing has really changed except for a little fatigue, but you got to watch because the fight, when you're a patient of this, the fight is up here for the patient, I always say, because depression is bound to sink in. I don't care who you are. You say you can't, you're not going to get depressed. You will. And um, the fight is up here. you got to deal with that. Let the doctors do the rest because they know what they're doing. Right. You know, this is something I wouldn't, I didn't know. When they told me I had cancer, I, I was just in a parking lot after I left the doctor. I didn't know where to go. First time in my life, I didn't know what to do. But you find the right doctor, as I have, and um, they know what to do. Listen to them, you know. And uh, but when it comes to up here, you have to have you have to have the will to fight. You know, they can't give you that. Dr. Molina can't give me the will to fight. She could tell me, but it has to be in me, and it has to be in you. So once you have that, you have to have. I have. I do it through spirituality. You know, God has got me through. I have a great wife who does everything for me. You know. You know, you know her. You better have mentioned her. You know, no, I, I, you know, I'm so happy to do that because without her, I'm telling you, it would have been, the, I would have turned the big light out. There's no way I would have went through this. Great. So, um, yeah, yeah, and friends and family, you know, and for me, it's music, you know. I'm not sick when I'm playing. When I'm playing music, I'm telling you, if you ever saw me, you'd say, this guy is lying. This guy does not have cancer. But I do, and, uh, but that's what gets me through. That's my therapy. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Jack. Thank you, Dr. Molina. So thanks so much. You know, now in the interest of time, what we'd like to do is take some questions from the folks watching the broadcast. So 
If you have questions on this subject, please post them in the comments section and we'll do, our, we'll do our best to answer as many as we can. In case we don't get a chance to answer your question here today, we'll post the answers on the Facebook page in the next day or two so you can always check back there. Okay, so let's see. It looks like we've got our first question is for Jack. Uh, Jack, were you able to work at your job through your treatment? Yes, I've been uh, pretty much able to work every day. Um, it, like I say, it hasn't really, I've been lucky. It hasn't affected me that way, but I've been able to work through every day. I even got a promotion during the four years that I've had this, so, <laughs> um, you know, I'm not complaining. Um, so, yeah, I can work. I, I, most of the people I know do work through it. Okay. You know, it's not... It, you know, it hasn't crippled anybody that I know, so that's good. Great, great, good, thank you. Uh, next question is for Dr. Molina. Dr. Molina, what are some of the common side effects of immunotherapy? So as I mentioned before, some of the common things that we see include fatigue, some patients can develop diarrhea, um, some nausea, some belly discomfort, overall pretty, you know, very well tolerated uh, medications. There are, uh, when you get the medications, the doctors will describe some of the rare uh, side effects uh, that are important to know about. Um, so remember, we're turning with these immunotherapy drugs, we're taking the brakes off of the immune system, we're turning um, the immune system on, and you can sometimes get attacks on self. So for example, the liver can become inflamed, the lungs can become inflamed. So these are all things that we're constantly asking patients, are you having worsening shortness of breath? We're checking blood tests and so forth. So. Uh, make sure you share any symptoms or signs with your doctors when you're on immunotherapy. Great, thank you. Uh, next question is for Jack. Uh, let's see, Jack, how did you see your life after your diagnosis? <laughs> well, the first couple of seconds, I thought that was the end of my life, to mm -hmm. be honest with you, but it really wasn't. I'll, I'll tell you now, it was the beginning of my life because, you know, you have to pick up and start again, and that's just what I did. So. You know, you just learn to live life a little differently. That's all it is. But you know what? I'm still alive. I woke up this morning. That's a good thing, you know. And uh, that's just it. I, you know, I always tell people, I'm not dying of cancer. I'm living with it. Yeah. So you got you to gotta think of it like that, you know. That's, that's what it is. Incredible message. Um, next question is for Dr. Molina. And uh, the question is, is this treatment right for all patients, meaning immunotherapy? Mm -hmm. It's a very important question to ask your, your oncologist whether mm -hmm. immunotherapy is, is the right choice for you or right uh, treatment for you. An oncologist is a cancer a doctor? A cancer doctor, okay. asking the, your, your medical cancer doctor about treatment options. Um, so there are, drug, there are immunotherapy drugs that are approved for patients with kidney cancer. So if you've had, for example, prior um, uh, targeted therapies such as Votrin and Sutent, and the cancer worsens, there is a drug called nivolumab or Abdivo, which is one of these immunotherapy drugs that's approved. Um, in addition, more recently, the combination of two immunotherapy drugs, nivolumab and ipilimumab, were recently approved in patients who had never, uh, who have never been treated for their kidney cancer before. Um, and these are select patients. Uh, there are also numerous uh, trials that are looking at immunotherapy and immunotherapy combinations. So. Mm -hmm important for, for patients to ask their doctors, is this the right drug for me? Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, another question for Dr. Molina. How does treatment impact the daily activities of life? Uh, for example, frequent visits to the doctor, travel plans, dietary restrictions? Um, so with, with immunotherapy, there's a lot of planning that goes on between the doctor and uh, the staff and the patient and family members. So as I had mentioned, this, these medications are given intravenously on uh, different cycles. So for example, if you're getting a, a drug that's given every three weeks, you're seeing the doctor every three weeks. Um, and, and what happens, what tends to happen with patients is if you know you're gonna, you wanna go on vacation certain time of the year, you're gonna mm -hmm. plan that around the time of infusion. So you, there's a lot of coordinating that occurs, but we, we you know, our goal here is to make your quality of life as best as possible. Sure. So we and wanted to. Jack's living proof of that, and he yeah. just explained that he was able to kind of live his life throughout yeah. this. Yeah, uh, and, this and therapy. we do that. That's we true. do that. We plan treatment. We plan scans around your life. Mm -hmm. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it looks like we have time for one more. Uh, the question is for Jack, and this is a good one. Jack uh, it says, "Where does your strength th come from as you navigate through this situation?" My strength comes from different areas. Uh, mainly, it comes through my faith. Mm -hmm. faith in God. It comes through my wife, who is just, she's my rock. Uh, it comes through my friends and my family, and it comes through music. You know, that's my, uh, that's my out. 
it, you the know? power of music is amazing. Sure. It is. It's universal and it's very strong. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's where I get my strength from. Well, it's a great message. I really appreciate you sharing okay. that today. Thank you. Can I, just spend a, can I just say one thing? I just Absolutely. wanted to say hello to somebody. I just want to send it out to all my friends at SP, uh, Casey Cure, and Canada Dave. Stay tough. What, what is SP? Uh, so, uh, that's uh, Smart Patients. Okay. It's a, uh, you know what that is. How would I describe support that? Group. It's a support group. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it's a, uh, well, I don't think the doctors can go on it, but it's uh, a. <laughs> it's, it's for patients. For patients. Uh, great. Support group. People who have what I have. People yep. in the same boat as I am. I have friends all around the world. Just a guy from Queens. I got friends from all around the world. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like, unfortunately, uh, we've run out of time. And as I said earlier, in case you didn't get around to answering your questions here today, please check back on the National Kidney Foundation's Facebook page where we'll be posting the answers in the coming days. Now, on behalf of the National Kidney Foundation, I would like to thank Dr. Molina and Jack for their insight and inspiration. I'd especially like to thank you for tuning in. I really hope this was helpful. And I'll remind you that the National Kidney Foundation is here to help if you have any questions about anything that has to do with kidneys or kidney disease. And on that note, I'd like to wish you all good health and good luck in all you do.